Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Photoshop Made Easy series. This video we are going to be talking about the interface of Photoshop, the basics of it, some of the things you need to do to set it up and get it running. I hope you watched the first video on how to download it. If you've never downloaded it, check up there. There is a link. Check down there. There's a link to the first video where you can download the Photoshop for yourself. And this video we are going to go through the process of how to what start set up the photoshop for yourself and this is the interface when you launch it so after installing it you just click on the icon which i have it on my tax bar and to open and this is the general interface for the first time this is what you are going to be seeing welcome to photoshop we are glad to have you here so to open drag and drop an image so there are various options as to how you can put images there so drag and drop an image or select from your computer to get started so you can select that from the listen it will take you to the browse and you browse the picture that you want whatever that you are opening and it's going to open it for you the, you can also use the create new here we have open we have search so the file is opening up so this is the file i opened so i could have also dragged and dropped it inside okay so after you've opened a file the menu changes you now have the recent files the so with the recent files, you can how they appear in a list form or in a grid form. So we have create new, we have open, we have search. If you want to search through for a particular file you need or you've worked on already. So with this one, I'll just simply go to create new. And when you go to create new, you have all this whole interface there. And this way you set up your document to get started. So with this place, we have the types of documents. So we have saved, uh, and I've saved new templates there. We have photo. So this one, there are various photo sizes, the common photo sizes. We have the 7x5, 3x2, 6x4, and a whole lot. We have the print. If you have to print, this way you have the options there. We have the envelope DL, envelope CS. We have the a4 a3 a5 a6 and you can also set up custom here we have the arts and illustration so this gives you a wider space to do art work those of you who draw and we have web here so we have web templates the page sizes are already there so whichever that you are using you can what just take it up and start doing your design and we have mobile as well so when you click on it, it gives you a template file size. So this is the file size of the mobile design. So immediately you finish design on it, it's going to fit in well for that particular phone brand you are using. And we have film and video. This is for thumbnails or third cards. Okay, so you can also customize it to your liking. So we have the preset details, which I'm going to use as Photoshop. So the name of the document which you can change later on we have the weight here you can which you can customize for your liking we have the height you can also customize it so you can change it to whichever measurement that you prefer so this is in inches the one i commonly use you can use centimeters and others and we have the resolution and what the resolution is is the resolution shows how dense the picture is, how compressed the picture is. So the higher the resolution, it gives you a higher quality. And with the resolution, you have to take note that on your PC, if your processor is not very fast, it will be better to use a lower resolution. Or if your RAM is not big, uh, uh, large enough, it's good to use a lower resolution. 
and your picture will not be that quality as compared to someone using a high resolution. So commonly, I use 300 pixels for smaller images like 10 by 10 and below A4, A3. But for bigger images like 2 by 3 feet, what I use is 100 pixels or 200 pixels. Those ones mostly are for printing. But if it's a small flyer, it's sometimes advisable to use 300 pixels, which will give it a very high quality. So let me just use 10 by 10 inches. Okay, 5 by 5 is okay. 5 by 5 inches. That's a squared image. We have artboard. If you want it to be an artboard, an artboard is simply when you design, you have about two or uh, the number of artboards depends on the number of pages you design on, which is always good if you are designing on the front and the back of something. You can just do the designs together and work along. But for now, I'm going to take it out. And the resolution too, you can choose the me uh, measurement. We have color mode. And these are the various color mode. We have the RGB, which and the CMYK, they are the common colors. And the RGB is if you are using it for your web, like a web flyer or a web banner, we use the RGB. It appears very nicely when you are using it on the web. But for printing, we don't use RGB color. We use the CMYK, which stands for Saint Mark Netta. I've forgotten the name of the Y in it. Okay, but anyway, let me just Google it out here. So those are the names of the colors that uh, the printers use. So that's what we use. And RGB was, okay, so saying magenta, yellow, and key. So those are the four colors. So the key is simply just the black here. So those are the four colors that the printers use. And the printer understand those colors more than the RGB. So if you are to print and use RGB, the printing output will not give you the same color. There will be some variations in the color which will not be good for you. And we have the RGB here, which is the common one for screen. So CMYK for print. We have CMYK for print. We have RGB for screen. So those are the two differences we have there. So if you are to print, it's better to use the CMYK. If you are not to print, it's good to use the uh, RGB. And we have the background content. So you can already select a background before you go there. We have the com the common one, which is white. You can choose black. You can choose your own uh, background color. Using the color picker. You can use transparent. So with that one, there's no background set there. And I'll just leave it at the white. That's the common one. Advanced, just leave this part for now. But if you have to do settings there, we have the color manage. So you choose which color management you are using. So this is a, a bit of an advanced. You can do research on that one. I'm not going to go deep into that one. So just go to create. And we have it over here. They are already because of the template I use, they've already given me uh, the guide. So let me for now let me just clear the guides. So when you open this is the interface you find for yourself. And with this interface, you can zoom in by clicking on control space, then the right click to zoom in. And when you click on left click, you have fitting and the other options. So with this interface, we have the file menu here where you can create a new file just like we did. Open the file up. You can open as open as a smart object. Those ones I'll explain those things later on. Recent files, and this is just the recent file we are using export and others we have the image settings which will be using as time goes on we have the layers the type that's text select and a whole lot and here are the tools which we'll be using we have 
move to select to so with a select if i select this part i can just and i click on the move to i'll be moving that part here so i can just take it across here and that's what the move tool is used for in the select marquee tool we have the polygon tool which is used to select uh, shapes so if you want to select a particular shape you can use it if you want to even select a human being you can use it so you can use it to select throughout here so you just draw your lines accordingly so those are just the basic tools there we have the quick select tool to select a right range that's on a color base or a pattern base we have the crop tool so as i've selected i could just crop there mm -hmm. so it depends on your listen so whatever you are cropping you can use it for it we have the brush tool and within the brush tool there are other tools you can have the spot healing tool we have the shape tool which i'll explain them in details later on we have the text tool and with the text tool there is horizontal vertical and a whole lot so i explain those ones in details while we we'll move on so with the text tool So I explain them in details. Shape to so I just drew a rounded rectangle. Okay, and we have the properties here, and we have other menus here which help you to edit it. So these are the menus that help you to edit or to customize the tool. So for here, I can change the color. So when I click, that's the fill color I've just changed, I will, which I'll explain later on. So I have these menus here, which are very useful. So I'll explain them as we go on. We have the layers panel. We have the gradient color, swatches, color patterns. So with this one, learn that you have to connect to Adobe Cloud, the libraries, the adjustments, layers, and this is where we are going to work on. So to edit a particular layer, you select on it, you come here, and you edit whatever you want to edit on it. So if I'm selecting on it, if I'm selecting on it, that's what you use. We have the pen tool. And the other tools are available. So this is just the basis of it, how you open it. And let me now take you through the last part. If you want to customize the Photoshop for yourself, we have you go to file, you go to edit, and down here you scroll to preferences yeah so at preferences you go to general so the shortcut is control k for those of you who like shortcut just like i do so when you go there you have the general distance so use legacy new document interface that's if you want to use the old interface uh, that other side the older versions are using but for now I'll just leave that part you can go to the tools edit them over scroll will help you to arrange them horizontal so with this place this is where you're editing so you just go through them and do the kind of editing that you want to do if i to go through everything we are going to waste a lot of time here but the appearance is one thing that you might like to change everyone in the state some like the light color 
which I don't like as a programmer. I've come to hate white things. I don't like the light things. It's not actually the best for me. It, it scares my eyes. We have the uh, light gray. We have the dark. This one is a bit dark, but not too dark. That's dark gray. And we have the black tin. And this is very good, but I prefer to use this one for the meantime. And if you want to change the other settings, just go through it and you have it for yourself. But for the meantime, we'll not be using some of the tools. And those I will be using, I will explain them in details as we go along. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it really helped you to grasp to get some of the basics that is going to, uh, the basics of it and what we are going to be doing in the near future so just stay tuned and subscribe to my channel and keep learning till i see you in the next video is bye bye and if you have questions leave it in the comment section and also you can ask your questions on the whatsapp group which is available all right so till i see you in my next video is bye bye